Yo, what up? It's Roger from the Masquerilla Podcast. We did it first. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more interviews with your favorite emerging artists. Follow Masquerilla on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. We're back. We're back with another episode. We got Sempra. What's up, guys? How are we doing today? Coming all the way in from New Zealand. Flew in on the private jet just for this podcast. Indeed, we did. That's a fact. No, you're here because you're starting your tour with Lil Bubblegum. And just last night, right? Was that last night? Two nights ago. Yeah, two nights ago. <laughs> two yeah. nights ago, you played the Echo in Los Angeles. Uh, I just had Rio Vaz on the podcast. I think he played like the night before you. And then Dom Corleo was there. Like, it's been a heavy lineup at that venue in LA. Hell yeah, it was dope. Um, it was it was a crazy room. I didn't really expect to sell it out, but we were yeah we were like what were we like 20, 20 tickets off selling it out. Um, but yeah, it was it was good fun. That's a sellout in my book. <laughs> yeah. Um, your first show in LA or no? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's like my first show in the states. Wow. Period. So yeah, no, it was it was a, a really cool experience and like cool to be put in front of all those people that are listening to my stuff like all over the world. You said that you didn't expect to sell it out. Were you nervous? Your first show in America, you're wondering if fans are actually going to come out. Yeah, yeah. So just like you know, I like I had those general nerves of like performing, but even like the lead up to the shows and stuff when we like started talking about um, doing a tour over here i was like well i don't know i don't know if we're gonna be able to like you know garner that amount of people to be able to like go to these different cities and you know perform um but it was a good surprise to like to see everybody out there yeah but yeah the the nerves um i find like the hardest thing with performing for me i'm like in the green room pacing around you're so you're super nervous before you hit the yeah. stage and i imagine yeah. you're on the stage and just you're in the zone and everything's fine yeah that's usually how it goes um like I, I find like the the couple of days before and especially like the set before my set is like mm. excruciating but um it's a, it's like a weird thing i guess i channel it into to energy as soon as i like step up on the stage everything's usually fine yeah i'm not a performer by any means but whenever i have to like public speak or i have to give a speech at a concert or do something i'm always so nervous and then the second I'm done, I'm like, I want to do that again. Can I just go back on the stage again and talk for no reason? <laughs> yeah, I, I feel that as well. Um, you know, speeches were always like trash for me at high school, all that sort of stuff, um, public speaking. But then I, I feel like speeches are one thing. And then there's like actually like going out and like performing. <laughs> yeah. so, I don't want to undermine what you're doing no, here with no, no, me yeah, giving no. a speech at my friend's <sighs> wedding. Yeah, I I feel you though. Um, it's it's fucking, it's something else. Uh, but I know I know what you mean with like b being up there is like a completely different thing. It's like, um, the feeling of like reciprocated energy. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's usually what sort of helps me through. And like like you said, you know, like when I'm up there and like towards the end of my set, I'm like I could I could keep going, sort of thing. But yeah. and after the set. Are you stoked to meet your fans after or are you just drained? Like what's the vibe when you're finally done? Oh, I just like, I immediately just like got off stage and then just like went down into the crowd and just started Fuck taking yeah. photos. It was like, yeah, it was, it was cool to see so many people that listen to me like on a daily basis and, and enjoy my music. Cause it's like, it doesn't really register in my head mm -hmm. that that's a thing. Cause I'm like sitting there like just like a little nerd at my keyboard making beats from my bedroom right and, all know, the way yeah, in new zealand and new zealand and then there's you know people in the states that are just like bumping the shit when they go to the gym and that sort of stuff it's like a, a, a big part of their daily life which is like that's like really really dope to me and it was cool to be able to put myself in front of those people because what led to this moment was an incredibly viral song hundreds of millions of streams across your catalog on that one song alone spotify it's at like 70 million now we're gonna get into that Mm. But let's take it back to where it all started. New Zealand, Hamilton is where you were born. Uh, I read that you moved around a lot as a child. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, so pretty much most of my life has just been like darting around like small town New Zealand. Um, Why are there small towns in New Zealand? Like I have no point of reference for New Zealand. Oh, uh, small towns like... I get what. What's a small? So we'll, we'll start with you. What's a small town here? A small town in Los Angeles. Uh well, there's like the Valley, which is more like in the cut, uh, kind of sticks. But it's not. They're just like really big, like gated communities, and yeah. like or like Bakersfield is like a 
smaller subset uh that and like there's like farms and stuff uh but like a small town like in los angeles like i don't know like fucking venice is yeah. smaller. Uh, yes. i mean maybe like i'm from new york originally yeah so my point of reference to like small towns in new zealand is like maybe like upstate new york there's thirty thousand people and it's like a smaller town compared to like new york city or something yeah so 30,000 people would be like around that sort of like okay. the population but with our small towns so you guys I, I guess what you're you like you guys have here is like cities and then like small towns within cities yeah right which we don't have we have like our cities and then suburbs huh. so it's just like sort of living areas but then our small towns are like all sort of separated from each other they're just like dotted around the country and then it's just like open road between them so we just have like a bunch of like little tiny little towns with like 20 30 thousand people in them um and that's like mostly where i lived um i lived in a place called why that was like the longest i spent in a place like four years or something so what led to the moving around um it's just the way my parents like to live i guess we just kind of got bored of places and then they'd just be like all right we're moving and i'd, I'd de- <laughs> detest it a little bit <laughs> what are your what were your parents doing for a living at the time when they're just moving around uh so my mum was a tattoo artist so wow. so they'd just like um, wow. run out of shops in like small town New Zealand um, and they'd just be like all right well we're going here so they'll just like close the shop there okay. and then open their shop yeah and then that's pretty much just what we did um pretty simple just just straight up just like it, it was like rinse and repeat sort of mm-hmm. so there's like nothing different about the small towns just like just restart 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 probably restart. hard to make friends in that scenario yeah. growing up yeah no exactly so um it got harder as i got older because of these like ev- in small towns everyone knows everyone mm-hmm. so they have these like tight-knit communities and then like everyone has their little friend group and it's kind of hard to so just like come there and infiltrate that so that's like a big part of how i sort of like led to getting into music was because i was like when i was younger it's easier because it's just like you know you're more extroverted like less right. anxiety but then as i like was getting into my like late teens and i was like oh or I'm staying aside now. So, yeah, it was just like out of anxiety that I just kind of just stayed in my room and decided uh, I want to make some music. I tried it one day and it worked. So, And your mom's a tattoo artist. When you're moving to these small towns, uh, now small towns, I'm thinking like the south of the USA, are like tattoos accepted or are like you guys, the freaks, like the traveling tattoo circus that's coming into town <laughs> or like oh, oh, what's the vibe? No, in, in New Zealand, I feel like tattoos are pretty accepted. Like tattoos are a big, big part of the, the native Maori culture in right, New right. Zealand as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's, um, I haven't really found too much trouble with like having tattoos or like being tattooed. Um, and I feel like just everywhere around the world, well, in most parts around the world, it's sort of just becoming more accepted. Yeah. Um, and when did you get your first tattoo? I was 15. Did your mom yep. give it to you? <laughs> which one is it? Is it anywhere um, visible? Nah, it's, so it's like this line on my calf. Um, yeah, she did it when I was 15. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know what. I just felt like getting a tattoo. I was like, all right, it's time. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, she's like, okay, you're nearly 16, so you can get it. Yeah, and I was like, went to high school. This is like big ass tattoo on my calf yeah so she did that i remember the first kid in my high school probably in like the ninth grade so we're like 15 the first kid to get the tattoo he got like the captain crunch logo tattooed on his calf just because he liked the cereal and i just remember it was such a shocking like the whole school was like oh my god he has a tattoo and like his mom had to like sign off on the waiver but it's different when your mom is the one giving Doing you the tattoo. <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah, that's that's sort of what it was like. It's like people come up to you and like, "Is this real?" And I'm like, "Does it?" So doesn't. all these years later, are you still stoked on the tattoo? If I could go back, yeah. I would be like, "All right, no lions, no clock tattoos, no rose tattoos. <laughs> I don't have clocks and roses, thank God." But the lion, I'd be like have a think have a think <laughs> you know you can you can come up with something more creative than a line well you can't get it removed because that would be disrespectful to no, the artist exactly that's what i'm mother. saying i'm like I, i'll still i'll still rap it you know mom did it <laughs> so your, your parents seem sick and i read that you were raised on 
a lot of like rock acts and bands that they were into yeah yeah so it was it was mostly just like acdc and like metallica and stuff or just whatever they would play in the car you know i wasn't like actively like going out of my way to like listen to music but it was just like what i was exposed to mm-hmm. and i think that probably led to like a lot of the music that i make now that like harsher sound mm-hmm. i've always kind of just been like drawn to and how'd you stumble onto like soundcloud rap and that whole wave what was the first experience with it i was actually kind of late to it um it was x so x for me is like was is like the number one and like the biggest inspiration that i've had in music um he was like the first artist oh actually no i, I so I, I found denzel curry but i didn't mm. really dive into the underground scene um because denzel curry at the time was like there was like it was like around the time he released um ultimate okay yeah, yeah. that's like a little bit later yeah, yeah 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 so yeah i was i wasn't i wasn't too early on that scene um it was around like 2015 2016 that i sort of like found denzel and then mm-hmm. x came around 2017 mm-hmm. I, I see uh, i found look at me through this like meme compilation <laughs> and i was like what the hell is this <laughs> I was like, it this is takes a little crazy. bit longer to travel all the way to uh, to new zealand, new zealand apparently. yeah yeah um, but, did you have friends at the time were and if so were they into this was anyone in those small towns into this or you no, were the no, one guy i just i, I found that that song and i was like showing my friends i was like listen to this shit <laughs> i was like this is this is crazy and they're like oh it's too aggressive for me i don't i don't like it <laughs> and i was like shut up that's uh, crazy yeah. no nah, yeah so i found i found x and then um I just sort of like fell in love with how diverse his, his catalog was and the sounds and like the emotions that he was he was putting into his music and um i was into film at the time so i studied film at university so i was like learning how to like sort of do the same thing but with film and i was like man this is like it's like really cool the way that he how gritty his music was and like how he used distortion to make everything like sound fucking crazy so i was just like I just started researching his catalog and then and then uh i i so, sort of found like branched off to different artists so i found like ski and then i this like members only and then mm-hmm. members only like puya ghost man like all of those those sort of people it was like mostly like the florida uh rap scene that sort of like took me into like the soundcloud thing and then i just started researching backwards pretty much yeah when i first we spoke uh when your song was going viral mm-hmm. we spoke on zoom and then we met in real life uh when I first heard your music, I was like, I feel like I took like a time machine. I was yeah. like, because the funk thing is happening, but it really felt so 2015. I was like, damn, this is like the hardest shit from my era of SoundCloud. Uh, and you kind of look like early Ghostman to me. I don't know if like anyone ever says oh, that. I get, I get a lot. I get, I get Ghostman and like Ruby mixed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can see some Ruby in there. Um, so what made you want to start recording music? Um, so it was uh, it was around the time that I found X, and I just I was making like like video edits and stuff, and I was like, it was it was just like a a spur of the moment thing. I was like, I had my Xbox headset, that mm-hmm. had a mic, and then I had like Audacity on my computer, and I was like, all right, I'm a I'm gonna make a song, and I'm gonna see how it goes. So I just like. Um, it was around the time oh no it was like after but i had been listening to 17 that that mm-hmm. tape by x a lot mm-hmm. they're like lo-fi sort of like chill lo-fi sound and i like went on youtube chill lo-fi beats <laughs> 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 kind of like downloaded one and then like wrote some lyrics and then like recorded to it and it just like i was like man this isn't good but it isn't shit so it's <laughs> like I, I just yeah i was like and it was kind of fun so i just did the next song and the next song and the next song and i just like got addicted to doing it and rest is history really what year was that when you started uploading music uh 2018 and were you a part of schema posse at N- some point or affiliated yeah, yeah. um i was for i think i joined in like 2020 mm-hmm. and then it, it ran until last year um yeah it was good it was um it was cool to like sort of see how like the people Cause like I'm inspired by Peep and like Ghost and all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff, and like in that 2015 scene, it was like cool to be able to like meet the people that I'd like looked up to and like talked, uh, like uh, research their music and all that sort of stuff, and sort of work in a community. 
Who um, else was in it when you were in it? Um, Jay Green, Cold Blooded, like all the OG okay, sort of members. Okay. Um, KB, uh, Mr. Cisco. Um, I still talk to a lot of them. Like, there's no bad blood or anything. They're all good, good people. How does one get approached to be in Schema Posse? Is it just like Instagram DMs? Like, yeah, yo, it was a, it was a, it was a funny story. So, I was like taking a break from music at that point because I was like, I was a, a bit mentally drained from it and like like music and like social media and that sort of stuff. So, I um I was just sitting there chilling and I like deleted all my social media apps and stuff and I was like playing Kingdom Hearts all day. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then I was uh, I'm gonna log into my Instagram see if anything important has happened. And then Jay had messaged me and he's just like, "What's up, man?" <laughs> and I was like, "Oh shit!" I was like, "God damn! All right, all right." And then um, I responded and then he we we sort of just like started getting to talking and stuff. And he just like, asked me if I wanted to join because he's like making new tape and all this sort of stuff. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm down." And then yeah, he like introduced me to like all the group. And then um, there was a bunch of new members that were coming in. And we just like started like the new like little wave that we were working on. What song caught his attention? Was there something that was like blowing up at the time that, or he just saw you in the scene? Um, no, there was actually like it was it was just like him seeing me in the scene. He says like he he just like doesn't even remember. <laughs> He's just like yeah, he said that I'm I'm the only one that he doesn't remember like how exactly he found me. <laughs> But yeah. I guess so he, he must have been smoking on some stuff and then <laughs> fucking people had to have been like tagging him in your comments on Instagram or something or sending him sending him your stuff I would imagine yeah oh uh, maybe yeah someone might have sent him stuff but I don't think anyone was tagging him in the comments or any, any huh. sort of thing but yeah yeah I don't know how it happened but it was it was good fun well shout out to Jay Green the legend he has a song called Mascarella uh, oh really yeah from way back when uh i don't even know if, where that is or if it's still there but i remember it so shout out jay green the goat um eventually you're recording music and you release cowbell warrior that one went mega viral mm. and still going viral was there anything before that that started to catch heat was it like a progressive slowly building or all of a sudden this song just went crazy um well I guess you, you could say it was like a, a slow build um you know I, I put the groundwork in um for a, for a long time before cowbell warrior sort of popped off you know there was a couple of songs that had like garnered some attention but like nothing to that degree i guess mm -hmm. like holy smokes was so cowbell warrior is like based off holy smokes mm -hmm. like the formula of holy smokes so i was like i saw some success with holy smokes and i was like oh okay I see <laughs> cowbells and go fast so i was like all right i'm gonna make i'm gonna take this <laughs> and i'm good gonna to me. pour gas on it yeah and then that's where cowbell warrior came from and, and you're producing all your own songs yeah yeah and you produce that one yeah so how'd you learn to produce um i was just like sick of doing you like getting youtube beats uh, i for me like the being able to sound exactly how i want is important to me so i was like sitting there i've always been like really big on learning editing software so like photoshop and um, final cut pro and stuff i do all that stuff um so i was like all right time to time to learn how to use the door so I, I learned how to produce on logic first just by like youtube tutorials you know youtube university is the way to go yes sir um so yeah i just like taught myself how to produce on there and then like had some like tips from producer friends and then moved over to fl studio because i was like seeing some of my friends work on there and like the workflow is really fast with like how you uh use the channel rack to like structure out your beats and stuff so mm. i was like all right i'm gonna I'm gonna learn how to do that and yeah it's just it's pretty much just like trial and error um and over time i sort of just like picked up different things um and different like sample kits and it's just pretty much youtube so are you producing 10 beats at a time and then you write lyrics to it or do you already have like a melody in your head of like what you want your lyrics to sound like and then you make production around it like how does that process work so a lot of the time um i just like sort of sit down and i'll make a beat or like make a few beats like structure out a few beats and like if one sort of catches my ear then i'm like all right i'm gonna uh, record some lyrics to this but i kind of get um I get stuck between producer brain and writer brain a lot mm. so i'm like i'm I, if i'm so stoked on the way a beat sounds 
I like let my lyrics lack a little bit. I'm like, I just want to hear vocals over it. So I'm like, right. 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 <laughs> so yeah, I, I, um, the, the way that happens is I just like let the beat sort of tell me what to say. Um, I'm not usually working on too much stuff at once, usually just like one song at a time. And where does the inspiration for the lyrics come from? Like what media are you consuming or what, where's the inspiration from for it? Um, mostly just <clears throat> horror movies. Yeah, I, just, I just sit down and like watch horror movies on Netflix or like whatever. That's kind of all I do. What are your top three favorite horror movies? That's, that's hard to say. I, I feel like, um, what I base my like top horror movies off is like the ones that just scared the shit out of me the most. Yeah. And that's usually the ones that I watched when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So the, f the first movie that like actually scared the absolute shit out of me was, um, Rob Zombie's Halloween. Mm -hmm classic I, I watched that when i was like i think i was like eight and it, yeah that that was that was not a good idea <laughs> um and then another one i watched was called welcome to the jungle and it was um it was like this found footage style huh. horror movie um where these these tourists go into like the bushes of papua new guinea and they get fucking eaten by cannibals wow and i was like it was found footage movie and i was like i was like yeah, eight. Fuck <laughs> that. Fuck that. i will not be watching that anytime soon uh, yeah so i was like sitting there in my bed like eight years old trying to convince myself that i'm not in the jungles of papua right, new guinea right. <laughs> so i'm not gonna get eaten so yeah I, i'd say like those those few movies that i watched when i was younger i would I'd, i'll probably they'll probably be my favorites forever but um i, I really like hereditary hmm. hereditary is good and then midsummer as well is good i'm not a big horror movie person hmm. i don't even know if this is considered a horror movie uh what's it called is it strangers oh uh, it, it's it's an american film yeah it's, it's the one where they're just like in a house and then people in mass eventually kill them one by one yeah the classic formula uh and that one really scared the shit out of me i was like i don't know probably like 14 or something but because it's so realistic yeah it's like this could actually happen like there's no like aliens or whatever whatever it's like no they're just like tormenting these people and then they're in the middle of nowhere it's like fuck yeah it's like the you can't really dissociate that from reality too much right. so yeah that's what gets you so when you made the beat for cowboy warrior did you know it was about to go crazy because you said you were following the formula when you heard the finished product for the first time where you were like it's a wrap or you yeah. still were like i hope it works but i doubt you imagined it was gonna go this crazy no nah, yeah I, I knew it was gonna it was gonna do well and it did like it did well for what i was sitting at at the time you know like it, it was a slow burn um for a while like i i, I look at the graph of like the strains and yeah. stuff and it's just like because i released it a while ago mm -hmm. and it's like oh <laughs> it just goes up so yeah was i knew it, I, was it 2021 I think so. Like, yeah, like late 2021. I think. yeah, um, yeah. I knew I knew that it was it was going to be like well received, I guess. But I didn't. I had no idea it was going to go like that. Um, and at the time that it did, it was yeah. It was like it was very surprising because I was like I was I I stopped thinking about that song for a while. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, and it just sort of like came up. But that's it's cool to see that that's possible now you know like just a song from like way back in your catalog mm -hmm. can can just blow up out of nowhere and where did it blow up? like what do you attribute the success to was it TikTok? was it just a random soundcloud algorithm was it a youtube channel um it, i think i can't pinpoint it exactly it was definitely TikTok though but i think it was like this one TikTok that this um this dude made and it was like these crazy like flashing visuals and it was like um it was just the song and then just these like seizure inducing like <laughs> like visuals just like literally yeah. like real bad for like epileptic people um but yeah it was just like that video just popped off and i was like, oh shit and then i'd see all these like videos sort of like breaking off from it and they, they would all just they were all just going viral and i think that yeah it was definitely tiktok that that sort of um put gas on that song uh and then instagram reels as well Hmm. but that sort of came off tiktok so everything sort of spanned from that one tiktok i think so what happens after that the song is starting to go viral you're living in a small town with your parents right are you still living oh, with no, your parents no, or are you no, I'm, I'm 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 by myself now well with like flatmates and stuff but but i mean when the song is going viral you're already with you were like in you left college yeah so this is like yeah 
I've, I've been chilling for a while. So it was like, so 2021. Oh no, so it blew up this year. Right. Yeah, so I'm... um. I'm like living in a flat with like a few other few other people and just like just chilling. Is like everyone freaking out? Are you showing them the stats and you're like, I don't know what's happening, but I just did two hundred thousand streams today? Or yeah, no, nah, yeah. people would like a lot of people would send me like just random videos and stuff with my song in it, mm-hmm. and they're like, this is going viral, and I'm like, yep. <laughs> like, All right, cool. I'm gonna yeah. make more money because you. I would imagine uploaded through distro kit or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that so and you produced it so it was, yeah it was so you're getting a hundred percent of uh, so this is probably around the time when we zoomed and you were in that flat and you were like i'm making good money and i don't know labels are not really like i don't know um and then it started you know it continued to go crazy and everyone's hitting you up yeah. uh and then you're in America and you actually, you were hanging out with like Ramirez and Fat yeah, Nick yeah. and Puya too or not Puya? Um, no, I, I, I hung out with Puya for a little bit. He just popped into the studio for like an hour or so. We're just chilling, watching corn videos. <laughs> watching what videos? Corn videos. Corn? Yeah, like... Um, oh, I thought you said corn of... videos. Oh, no, no, no. I was like, None I wouldn't put that. it past him. <laughs> as that would be the least surprising thing I heard. But growing up on this Florida rap scene, and now all of a sudden you're in the studio in Miami with Underground Legends. What was that like? Uh, it was surreal. It was, like, it was really full circle. Um, but it, it was cool because they're, they're all really down-to-earth people mm-hmm. and like... Um, you know they're just like I, I i felt really comfortable just like chilling with them and you know i wasn't really starstruck or anything but it was like it was just dope to see that to like meet these people and them being what i expected them to be mm-hmm. and and just like really nice generous people you know and like um you know they don't have to they didn't have to fly me out they didn't have to like you know they could just be like you know we're up here and right you know you can climb your own way up right but you know for them to like you know reach down and sort of like show love was was really dope to me and it, it speaks a lot on their character as people yeah i think i either said this on the zoom with you or when we met in person um i did the puya and fat nick show in 2015 at the roxy and it sold out and it was great mm-hmm. and the first thing after the show that fat nick said to me was like how'd you do and i'm like what do you mean how'd i do like you guys were the ones on stage like did you make money and it's just so no artist has ever asked me if i've made money throwing their show before uh so that for sure speaks to his character a real dude yeah shout yeah. out fat nick and puya underground legends um what was it like meeting with all these labels and everyone reaching out and saying you're the greatest thing ever <laughs> yes yeah, it, it, it was pretty much that um it was it was cool it was like cool to get amongst that um and like meeting a lot of people you know i still keep in contact with some of like the like connects that i made through like coming coming here and meeting everybody um yeah it was just like for me for a lot of people especially i find like i i I feel like artists that live in the u.s and are are sort of used to this like culture Mm -hmm. would kind of be like like doing all these meetings and shit but i was like you know i'm from new zealand like we don't have any of that sort of stuff so i'm just like this is crazy <laughs> like being uh, like immersed in that so i was just like kind of just trying to soak up everything they were saying and all that sort of stuff but yeah it got a bit tiring especially because the bro dan was booking straight back-to-back meetings all day <laughs> didn't even get to see anything <laughs> how many meetings do you think you took oh, I, I i don't even know it was like it was a good like three meetings a day type thing wow yeah more more we got was it the more? manager in Damn. the background saying it was more than three a day so what made you choose to want to eventually sign to a label? Um, I, for for me, the most important thing with like being with with a label would be like independence and mm-hmm. um, or like what feels like independence. Like more like I'm creatively doing what I want to do and just doing the exact same thing that I've been doing, like the same formula, the same like release schedule, and for that label to be able to come and just like put gas on that and like blow it up without interfering too much with what i'm doing mm-hmm. and that's what um i feel like tnk offered for me and so it was pretty much that you know it was like it was like i didn't want to change my lifestyle and for them to like facilitate that was like what sort of like won me over 
you also got a pretty hefty bag. Yeah, yeah, the bag too. But for me, for me, like you got a big bag. I I think I saw the amount of the bag because you know <laughs> I was in the mix. Uh, it was a big bag. Yeah, it was a it was a decently sized bag. I think for for a small town uh, New Zealand kid. Um, immediately went home and I bought a GTR. I saw that. <laughs> That's that was my question. What's the first thing you purchased? Yeah, it was with that major label money. Yeah, there was a, a GTR. Car. And yeah, how much was the car? Um, New Zealand, like one fifty k. What's the so that's like what is that? That's like a hundred k here. God yeah. damn! Yeah, that bag was big. <laughs> so it didn't even make a dent in the bag. No, no, tax does though. But it's a story for another time. Um, <laughs> What's the tax rate in New Zealand? Uh, it depends how you play it. So. There's a, a a flat rate for businesses of like twenty eight, but if you if you draw from it, it's like thirty nine percent. Huh. So I've I've tried to like play it as smart as I can with my yeah. my accountant, but we'll see how that goes. It's not paid yet. Set up a nice RIA Roth, you know, a retirement fund. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna see what I can do. The f- and that was the first bag i put 100k into my retirement fund <laughs> fuck a retirement fund who gives a shit dude <laughs> yeah no we, we we buy gtrs yeah dude that's the retirement fund you can sell that in fucking 20 years for 300k i know nothing about cars yeah. no they, they'll go up i think <laughs> hopefully it's gone up a little bit already so i'm just like chilling I'm, I, don't, I don't plan on selling it because it's just like something that i've always wanted yeah. to buy so i'm like i'll just keep it but if i do sell it I think I'll get more than what I paid for it. Absolutely. What else? We got any chains? We got any new clothes? You move into a new apartment? Are you moving to America? Um, no, no chains. I'm not a big chain guy. Eh? I'm, I, I, I still wear the same sort of clothes that I wore beforehand. Mm-hmm. You know, just like all black type of shit. Some cargo pants and some fucking Vans. I still wear Vans. Fuck um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So nothing, nothing like that has like really changed. I just sort of for me it's um it's more about the comfort of living so mm. I'm like you know i've got this money and i can just like chill and just work on whatever i want to work on and not have to worry about going to work or like worry about paying the bills you know like where my next meal is coming from um it's that was like for me like that's that's what money's about it's, it's more about it's it's a tool to make my life easier to live and more enjoyable rather yes. than like you know, I have this money. I'm gonna go buy blah, 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 right. go crazy. And so yeah, I, I just try and look at it in a healthy way, I guess. Smart. Yeah. Uh, you break any off to your parents? Um. Yeah, I bought my mom all this like <laughs> motorbike gear. I'm flying my mom out to Houston. Wow. Um, That's so in a couple sick, days. Dude. Yeah. So she's gonna come on tour. Wow. Um. Which is pretty funny. So she yeah, she's only ever been to Australia, which is like across oh, the ditch. She's like going on the rest of the tour in the yeah, van. Yeah, yeah. Wow, first tour. <laughs> yeah. Mom's in the van. Yeah, we we we. I love she's that, dude. Mrs. Worldwide now. So Fuck yeah, <laughs> baller. Yeah, so that's dope. Um, the tour with Lil Bubblegum. This podcast could be out, and the tour is over. Mm. So let's just speak it into existence what was the craziest thing that happened on tour and just in your mind tell me something crazy that hasn't happened yet but you think it's gonna happen shit well my mom's coming on tour now so i don't know if i can get too crazy anymore but um is your mom gonna crowd surf oh i doubt that one <laughs> That'd be, that would, it would be funny she's she's uh she's a small lady so it's very possible okay we gotta get your mom to crowd surf so that happened that was nuts i saw the video bro went viral it was on at rap that was fucking sick and then i saw your mom she was fucking smoking a blunt on stage that yeah. was so fire yeah that was crazy that one <laughs> yeah she had a blunt and a bottle of henny and she was, yes, she was behind the dj decks going crazy yes dude that was fucking nuts spoken into existence uh i got a secret question Am I holding the right thing? Let's see if the camera can see. So we have another New Zealand. What's the word again? It's not a. We, we call it a. We, a we can call it a, kiwi? a New, New Zealand. That's actually kind of fire. A fucking. We got another kiwi <laughs> in the office. We got a little bubble gum. Uh, about to record an episode with him. So before we start recording, I said, hey, little bubble gum, write a question. I don't know what it says, and I'm going to ask Sempra. 
here's the question. How do you feel about Vile calling himself the best performer in the New Zealand underground? Oh, interesting, that one. Um, I feel like confidence is uh, is key. Um, I don't know if it's true or not, but, you know, if he's confident, I admire it. Um, but, yeah, we we like to keep ourselves humble <laughs> in New Zealand, and I'd like to see a little bit more of that. So many, so many uh, follow-up questions. <laughs> you look uncomfortable. I'm not even going to ask any follow-up <laughs> questions. I have, I don't know who this is. I'm not from New Zealand. Uh, you know what? Something I didn't ask at the start of the interview. Sempra, your real name is Calum. Calum or Calum? Calum. Calum. Yeah. Where does Sempra come from? Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Who? What? What so, is? I, I th- this is actually a, this is I, I feel like this is cool it's like nerdy but it's I, in my eyes it's pretty cool um there's a spell in harry potter called sectum sempra and it like it's like uh emulates like a samurai sword just like ripping people up so if you cast it on someone that's like they just start getting lacerations all over their body um and i was like oh i like the word sempra and i sort of searched up what it meant and it, it meant like continuous or forever hmm. and for me like an important part of like making music is leaving a legacy and you know like you're you live on after you go because your music's always going to be there you yes. know you're you're part of history you're part of something um and for me when you know people hear my name or like hear my music i want them to like attach it to me and like that's yeah i just want to live on forever and i thought that was like sort of suited that's definitely one of the better explanations I've gotten on this podcast of what someone's name means. True. <laughs> there's, a, there's a fucking cool story there, and it means something. Um, speaking about living on forever, what does the future hold for you? What can fans look forward to? New music? Do we got a Cowbell Warrior remix coming? What's happening? Um, yeah, I'm working on... I'm just always constantly working on music. Um, right now, I'm working on tape that I've like uh, sent off to... Harper, Freddie Dread, um, Ramirez, and I'm gonna try and get Puya on as well. Just like wow. have like a five track uh, EP. It's like horror inspired, like old. Oh, you 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 love it because it's uh, their 2015 stuff. Wow. Um, Fuck yeah. Yeah, and it, yeah. So I'm just like sending off. I want to get some crazy features on it. Just like uh, let me get like some sort of like interlude on there. A sample. I gotta get my voice on this project. Bro, I, I got you, man. We 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 can take some little <laughs> cuts from the podcast. We can sample this podcast yeah. and put it in. Yeah, no, that's um, that's actually a good idea. I might I might hold you to that. Um, yeah, Cowboy Warrior Remix. Um, we're sort of we're in talks. So we just got uh, a mix back from Ski Master Slump God oh holy shit yeah, so that's, that's insane yeah that's a, that's a big jump for wow me. um yeah it's cra- crazy verse so you know we're working on that um so hopefully that'll come out soon i think Ooh. um might be filming a video for it oh so there's content on the way for sure how'd that happen did you guys follow each other on instagram do you have you guys ever spoke um it was it was through like mutual connections i nice. think um we just sent him sent him the record uh, to see if he liked it or not you know and um had my boys doing the work behind the scenes hmm. or i was just chilling and then um dan just sent me a photo and it was like ski cowbell remix and i was like wow oh, okay wow. <laughs> so we're doing this now that's legendary yeah no it's crazy because yeah I, I was before i even thought about making music you know i was just like walking to the water hole in new zealand with a ue boom just bumping fucking catch me outside dude full circle moment yeah no crazy yeah it's, it's dope um you know, now now as as you're working with your idols and you're on your own headline tour and you signed a major label deal and you're on the Masquerilla podcast which is probably the biggest accolade that, of them all that, that's a <laughs> yeah that's a that's <laughs> what, a circle as well my yeah. friend what advice do you have for new artists who are just starting out on their journey um the the biggest advice f- 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 that i wish i could have given myself is is like well it's easier said than done really it's just like fuck what anybody says because um being an artist you know you're 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 putting yourself out there and you're vulnerable and people are always going to have something to say Mm -hmm. um but put yourself in their shoes and and think about how negative 
of a life they must be living to be able to sit there and and start typing up these fucking crazy comments on the internet and actually pressing send uh, so i the way i think about it is like what would it take for me to sit there and be like i don't like this so much that i'm going to comment on it and like try and make this person feel like shit and it's like there must be some like really deep-seated issues within yourself to be able to do that so it's, it's it's so that's that's the first thing it's like fuck what anybody says and then and secondly it's just like you can get anywhere you want with like hard work and just perseverance um and consistency it's just like if you continuously put yourself in, in front of people's faces just routine 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 just keep bam in their face in their face in their face in their face people are going to have no choice but to tune in so yeah it's just like it's all about work and and wanting to do as good as you possibly can for yourself and and wanting things for the right reason and just like be your your best version of yourself i guess and put your best foot forward and just keep pushing beautiful sempra thank you for coming on the podcast thank you for having me my friend that's it that's it that's it signing off